This week's listener question on Talking Machines comes from Herbert Froelich, and he asks, I'd like to hear about time series clustering. So, Ryan, let's start with a definition. Time series clustering, broadly speaking, is, of course, the idea where we're doing unsupervised learning on time series. But in particular, what we're trying to do is identify, say, regions of different time series that sort of mapped on, map onto each other in some sense. And there are a variety of ways to think about this. Like a lot of different kinds of clustering, uh, you know, the idea is we have to come up with some notion of similarity. And then we're going to leverage that notion of similarity in order to identify chunks of data that uh, that belong to the same cluster. So clustering is almost always about identifying some latent discrete label that describes things. You could imagine time series clustering in a variety of different ways. I mean, one version is I see a lot of, I see a collection of traces. I'm going to imagine that these sort of time series, uh, each of these time series uh, is a draw from some distribution and they're kind of independent of each other, conditioned on some underlying distribution. And then what I'm trying to do is decide given each one of these time series, you know, what is its latent class? And there we need a notion of similarity between the time series. And that's where the magic will always kind of be because you have to decide just like any other clustering algorithm, what it means for two things to be similar. And there are a variety of ways to think about that. There could be, um, you know, do they have bumps in the same places? So like you could imagine just looking at something like if they're the same length, looking at a sort of point wise, like L2 distance. You could imagine taking the Fourier transform and looking at its spectrum and saying, okay, these two things have very similar kinds of frequencies in them. You could imagine uh, things like there's this idea of, um, of like dynamic time warping where you're trying to see whether or not you can kind of expand and contract time appropriately such that they match up and have similar properties. Um, and you could say they're similar if there exists some kind of simple warping that produces that. You could really come up with a long list of things like this where you take some properties and then you're trying to, you're going to cluster together the things that have the same properties. Then there's also a kind of a view on, on all of this in which, you know, you have maybe one big long time series and you're trying to find regions of it um, that are uh, that are coherent and match those against each other. So you're simultaneously trying to segment the time series and um, and then also take those segments and match those segments onto each other. And again, you're faced with a lot of the same uh, the same situation you would in the sort of the previous case where you have independent time series, but now you also have to figure out how to chop things up. There's a variety of ways to think about this. One thing you could imagine doing is using some kind of off the shelf change point detection type tool where you you run something that tries to at a kind of coarse grain level uh, divide the time series up into in the segments based on some kind of uh, change in the statistics and then do clustering on each of those separately. My preference is towards a kind of generative model of this in which uh, we imagine there's some latent process ticking along um, that has these discrete labels, often something like a, like a hidden Markov model or an HMM. And then conditioned on that latent state, we produce some kind of local dynamics. So a very common way to think about this is where the local dynamics are something like um, an autoregressive process. So they're continuous. We view them as being smooth in time, possibly vector valued. And within one of those segments, those kind of continuous dynamics are, are coherent. And, uh, and then the hope is that we can build a generative model for this. When we look at the posterior distribution given the data, then we can discover what the kind of the, these segments are and what those clusters are and what their identities might be, as well as what the internal dynamics are. So this class of models is often called a switching linear dynamical system or a switching uh, autoregressive process. And, and if you don't actually have dynamics over the latent state and you just want to do clustering, then you could have like a uh, sort of like a mixture type model as well. And these are successful in a lot of different things, and I think we've actually talked about them talked about them a little bit before. But I find them very appealing because they allow you to sort of be very upfront with what your assumptions are going to be about what makes a cluster coherent and whether or not there's dynamics over those clusters and how long they tend to be and so on. Somebody who's done a lot of a lot of great work in this space is uh, my postdoc Matt Johnson, who has also collaborated with uh, folks like Alice Wolsko and uh, and and Bob Data to uh, apply these models to things like mouse behavior. Uh, and they turn out to be to be very successful for that and a variety of, of other kinds of tasks. It's, it's just a nice kind of view on the world to say that I'm going to have some kind of latent discrete state ticking along uh, that is going to provide my cluster identities, and then I'm going to have interesting fine-grained behavior conditioned on, on those things. <laughs>